of all of the really worrying things that the Obama administration has done in its first roughly 100 days in office, in terms of material harm to the national security interests of the United States, I think the one that takes the cake is the reportedly imminent decision to release into the American population maybe as many as 17 Uyghur detainees out of Guantanamo Bay. These are people who, we're assured, uh, don't like the Chinese very much, but don't particularly have a beef with the United States. This is laughable on its face. First of all, the Uyghurs are people who, in this case at least, embrace Sharia. The program we've talked about many times. Uh, I call it the Theo political legal program. You could add military and, uh, and strategic and personal as well program that authoritative Islam obliges all of its adherents to seek to impose worldwide, not just in China, uh, not just in Afghanistan or Iran or Saudi Arabia, not just in the Muslim world, but literally on a global basis. And those who are not with that Sharia program have three choices. One, they can convert to it. Secondly, they can submit to it. And thirdly, they can die. Those are the three options. And you can bet that those who embrace Sharia, who believe that jihad is their duty as faithful Muslims to inflict it in order to dominate the world under a global theocracy, a, a Muslim ruler who will uh, administer Sharia all over the world, those people, whether they're Uyghurs, or whether they're Yemenis, or whether they're Saudis, or Pakistanis, or Indonesians, or from any place else, those people believe that everyone who is not with the Sharia program is their enemy. Whether they're infidels, whether they're apostates, former Muslims, uh, whether they're Jews, whether they're homosexuals, whether they're feminists, um, whether they're from any particular country. The Dar al-Harb, as it's called, the house of the non-believers, is at war, indisputably, inevitably, unalterably, with the Dar al-Islam, the house of Islam. That is Sharia. And the Uyghurs, who the President of the United States apparently seeks to unleash on the American people, will have that as their purpose. And it may be bad news for the Chinese in due course, but I'm afraid it will be very bad news for the people of the United States upon whom these folks are going to be unleashed. Now, bear in mind, these aren't just people who adhere to Sharia. These are people who have been called the worst of the worst, and I think with good cause, especially if you know what they've been doing in this detention facility in Guantanamo Bay, which has made the service of our men and women in uniform down there, keeping us safe from these people, one of the most horrible jobs in the military today. And we owe them a great debt of gratitude that they're keeping the Uyghurs and their co-religionists safely away from us until now. But these are people who have trained for jihad in Al-Qaeda training camps in Afghanistan and elsewhere. And more to the point, they're people who I believe will take full advantage of any opportunity we give them, exposing ourselves to their efforts to recruit others to jihad 
and perhaps to train them in the way of jihad, the violent kind of jihad, not just the stealthy kind. This is, I, I must say, an insane idea. Now, to add the proverbial insult to injury, <laughs> I have to tell you that the director of national intelligence, Dennis Blair, announced the other day that we can't just, quote, turn these people loose on the streets, unquote. We now need your help to take care of them. We're going to have the American taxpayer provide them some kind of subvention to help them get by here in this country. So we not only have the real prospect that they will be in our neighborhoods, uh, particularly here in the nation's capital, uh, they will be perhaps persisting as their fellow detainees who have previously been released have in some substantial measure persisting in jihad but we will have the privilege of paying them to do it. I gotta tell you if this isn't just the straw that breaks the camel's back for most Americans I don't know what it'll take to awaken them to the fact that the national security of the United States is not in competent hands at the moment. And it requires on the part of the rest of us a vigilance and an engagement to try to make sure that our enemies don't take advantage of that unhappy fact. Thanks for listening.